So I last uploaded about a month ago and uh, it feels really really good to be back. Let me explain. So in the past three weeks, I had both my lower wisdom teeth extracted and uh, I was gone because obviously I didn't want to look like a freaking chipmunk while making these videos for you guys. So uh, let me just give you a little update on what I've been up to while I was gone. So first, I ordered a new set of lights for a little project that I'm working on which hopefully will be done in the near future and fingers crossed it will turn out well. Secondly, I've been planning new videos for you guys which hopefully you all will enjoy because hint, these videos will not be filmed in Singapore. And before I get into today's video proper, I just want to insert a little plug here. So last month, one of my subscribers, Caleb, and his friends decided to send me a board game that they created called The Laboratory of Death. And it's a five to six player um, murder mystery game, which seems very, very interesting to play based on all the um, reviews that I've seen on his Instagram. Uh, I'm going to be doing a review with my friends soon um, but I haven't got the time to get to that yet but I'm not being paid to say any of this I'm not being paid to promote their game I'm just uh, supporting local, you know um, so yeah, if you guys want a fun game to play with your friends or your family then please head to their Instagram page at KMS Games to, you know, buy yourself one and check them out and just support them in general. So thank you Caleb and team for uh, sending me this and I look forward to playing it. So yeah, do you guys know what day it is today? Yes, it's Monday 16th of May, but no, that's not the point. Today is my last day of booking into Tokong. You know why? Because this. It feels so surreal that one year and 10 months passed just like that. But anyways, it's time to get my ping IC and enjoy my freedom. Freedom is here and it's time to go home. Bye SFT, bye Tokong. You'll be missed. <sighs> it is the day after Oari and I still can't believe that you know NS is over and I really miss the boys already. But anyways, I've got my cert and I've got my pluck, which means it is over for real. So in today's video, I'm gonna be having a short like look back on my entire NS journey from BMT to Air Force to SES back to Tokong and to ORD. So chapter one, of course, enlistment and BMT. So I enlisted back in July of 2020 in the 0320 batch and I POP in September 2020 as well. So when I first received my enlistment letter, um, I didn't want to enlist, obviously. I'm sure many people uh, have the same feeling as well. And I was dreading um, the start of this new chapter. Of course, enlistment is inevitable. And I still remember the day I shaved my head. I still remember the day I left my house for enlistment. And I still remember all the feelings I felt. And the main feeling was, of course, uh, nervousness. You know, like not knowing anyone at all. and going to an island with zero knowledge about the military, um, zero uniform group experience, and just not knowing what to expect. It was pretty scary at the time, but now that I look back, there's really, there was really no need to be scared because um, the nine weeks that I spent in Tokong was one that I will never forget. And it flew by pretty fast. So being in Mono Armor 42 SAR, um, yes, life was pretty tough sometimes, you know, like the standards are very, very high. The, the higher ups are very strict about regimentation and discipline. But it's the people that I met there, you know, like the sergeants, uh, the section mates like Daniel, David, Eugene, and the rest of my platoon mates, you know, it's just these people that made 
the tough times pass and it just made things made, made it easier for me to like push through find the motivation to to push through the nine weeks of training and bmt you know allowed me to uh, experience things that i wouldn't get to experience on a daily basis in the outside world so things like field cam uh, holding a weapon for the first time live firing hand grenades soc and carrying a heavy ass fuel pack for route marches so yeah it was a really eye-opening experience and um, one that was very memorable um, because of both the good and the tough times that I shared uh, with uh, my friends. Yeah, BMT also uh, allowed us, of course, to be more fit with all the PTs and the IPPTs, um, which I was happy to score and maintain uh, a silver at that time. You know, considering the fact that I have a video about my pre enlistee IPPT where I barely passed and uh, yeah, I didn't think that I would be able to maintain my fitness with that sort of standard. But yeah, um, in BMT, managed to um, maintain a silver and I was pretty happy with that. And lastly, BMT taught me to be more independent and more disciplined. Independent in the sense that, you know, at home you have washing machines or you have helpers or sometimes your mom helps you to wash your clothes. But in BMT, you're on your own. Um, you have to hand wash your clothes, you know, to maintain your hygiene. And for the discipline side of things, you know, we learn to uh, maintain a neat and tidy bunk at all times for standby beds. Also, punctuality is very, very important, not only in the army, but also in the outside world as well. And safety, especially, um, not only your own safety, uh, but your body safety, as well as all your other friends and also respect to not only yourself, your friends, but also your seniors. So I will never forget my nine weeks in BMT. It was the first step in transitioning from civilian life to military life. So if there's anyone watching who just enlisted or are going to enlist, um, just keep an open mind. Uh, I'm sure you will have as much fun as I did uh, if you keep an open mind and just make friends because Friends are really the ones that make your time less miserable. And I feel like having friends is definitely a kind of motivation for me um, because sometimes when times are really tough and I have thoughts of giving up, I would always tell myself that if my friends can do it, so can I. And that really pushed me to um, push myself even harder uh, and just get things done. So the first chapter of my NS journey was a memorable and fun one and now moving on to chapter two so end of bmt and start of my rsef journey was where i felt the fittest uh, especially during fep where we had to run 169 km in about a month and a half i ran distances that i never knew <laughs> i could run before like my longest ever run in my entire life was done during this period which was 15 km. Never ever ran more than 10 km prior to coming into the Air Force. But yeah, at this period, still during COVID, so we couldn't really go out. It was a work from home period. So during FEP, we had to um, do presentations and have online meetings um, every alternate day, if I re remember correctly. But, anyways, enough of FEP. The RSEF chapter was one hell of a journey. So some of you may know that my childhood dream was always to become a pilot, especially an airline pilot. So being able to join the RSCF was an opportunity to take a small step towards this dream. One perk of joining the RSCF was the ability to, you know, go overseas for training, uh, even though it's the COVID period. So as you guys know, for AGC, we went to Gendercott in Australia and uh, I went there early last year. I think in February, around Chinese New Year period. And I was lucky enough to meet people like Jingwei, Ben, Dylan Tio, and Dylan Yeo. And they just made the whole RSAF experience more enjoyable. So after signing the contract, the five of us were kind of like a group, you know, very close to each other. And we, our goal was to travel to Australia uh, together. 
and we were lucky enough to be able to do that. We were under the 0321 batch of uh, AGC pilots and yeah, um, going to Australia together was uh, a very fun experience and especially all the quarantine shenanigans, you know. And I made a few videos about that so if you guys want to check it out, I'll put it in the eye. Um, obviously, the not so fun part about travelling to Australia was the studying. So there were a lot of things to learn, like the things to do, pre-flight checks, in-flight checks, post-flight checks, the communications, and many other things, you know, that we were not taught before. Like most of us had zero flying experience, so reading about how to fly a plane without actually flying is like, it's not really helpful. So we just had to try our best to understand what was in the notes. And yeah, after the quarantine, we were properly introduced to the air grading center. And uh, yeah, the two months there was very, very enjoyable. And obviously, as always, it's eye-opening. You know, Army provides you with lots of eye-opening experiences. And uh, it was it's definitely one that I will not forget as well. Yeah, being able to room with Jingwei, Dylan, and Raynard, a uh, pretty hardworking bunch of people. Happy that Jingwei and Dylan made it through. Um, sad that Raynard and I didn't. But uh, all's good, you know, it was uh, it's the experience that counts. And I managed to fly a plane before <laughs> learning to drive a car. And I'm sure not many people get to say that they've flown a plane before. So I feel really lucky to, you know, have the opportunity to kind of catch a glimpse of what it's like to follow my dreams. Still gutted that I failed on the last flight, but uh, oh well, no point crying over spilled milk. Um, I tried my best and that's all that matters. So for anyone who dreams of becoming a pilot, then sure, please do join the RSAF. Um, a really good opportunity to chase your dreams. And yeah, just enjoy yourself, just do your best and I'm sure you'll be fine. So what's next after failing in the RSAF? Well, that brings us to chapter 3. So chapter 3 brings us to SES, which was from June 2021 to about November 2021. Um, switching back to regimentation after getting used to the work from home life in RSAF was something I wasn't looking forward to. And I would say SES was probably the toughest part of my NS journey because of all the outfields that we have to go through. But because it was tough, I guess it made getting the reward all the more satisfying. So SES is basically BMT on steroids, um, you know, with more things to learn about, more weapons to learn about, different equipment, and of course, way more things to carry during outfield. Foundation term was honestly not too bad, especially with my buddy Han. Um, all the shenanigans and laughs, you know, really made life easier. And there were only two outfields in foundation term. One conventional ops, which was the usual jungle outfield. And one urban ops, which is basically, you know, the buildings, like close quarter battles and all that. And they were honestly not that tough. It was the usual training in the day and then seven hours of rest at night kind of thing. But professional term was a slightly different story. You know, I was hoping not to get into infantry, but I got posted there anyways because, you know, I really had no choice. I think it's most probably because of the time that I had left in the army. So in infantry pro term, I had new section mates, I had a new buddy, and there were way more outfields, so I thought I wouldn't survive. But I'm thankful for Hongji, Andre, uh, Sergeant Kelvin, and the rest of my section for, you know, making pro term so enjoyable. I often get DMs from people asking me how I push through pro term, how I find the motivation to go through all the outfields and stuff, and my answer is simple. Um, it's the people. Without Hongji, without Andre, and without Sergeant Kelvin, I don't think I would have found any motivation to push through the outfields, let alone book in. But because of them, sometimes I really do look forward to booking in um, because I know that in camp I would be entertained. And without them, infantry pro term, wouldn't have gone by in a flash. So in November, when we were presented with the reward, which was the third sergeant rank, I honestly felt proud of myself, as well as my friends who got the rank as well, because I'm sure that we put in our 100% in whatever we did. And going through all the hardships the past 
five to six months, we were now given the opportunity to show our leadership skills as well as take men under our charge and hopefully motivate them and push them through their own NS journey. Which brings us to my final chapter in my NS journey. So the final chapter of my NS journey brought me back to where it all started, Pulau Tekong, but this time as a leader of recruits. I know that I was only going to be able to take one full batch of recruits because of the very little time that I had left. At that time, it was about five to six months. I was posted to Jaguar Company and I feel that my experience there was one of the highlights of my entire NS journey uh, because not only did I learn how a company runs during a batch, but it was also a joy to work with the rest of the commanders who were so, so fun to work with and you know, just very nice people. I want to take this opportunity to thank my OC ma'am, Captain Priya, and my Sergeant Major, Warren Suresh, and also all my Jaguar boys for all the memories. Um, it was a pleasure working with all of you, and I'm thankful for being posted there. You know, I feel like if I was in a different company, um, there would be no chance I'd survive because the bond among this set of commanders is so strong and you know, I hate to imagine working under a different setting. Taking a batch of recruits was something that I was pretty nervous about because one, I'm not a very vocal guy. I don't really like to scream and shout at people. And I would say that my voice is not very loud. So yeah, I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to control my, my recruits well. But thankfully, um, this batch of recruits that I took were pretty obedient. Sometimes they do get on my nerves, but um, still I managed to click well with them and managed to control them in a way that, you know, like I don't have to score. Instead, have a balance of nice and evil, like a balance of good and bad cop. So to any of my Jaguar recruits watching, it was a, a pleasure taking you guys and I wish you all the best for your NS journey. So that is all for the finale of my NS journey. NS, you know, basically provided me a good opportunity to make new friends, an uh, opportunity to hone my teamwork and leadership skills, and of course, the ability to keep fit. And I'm proud to have uh, maintained silver for my IPPTs during BMT and uh, improving all the way to a gold before I ORD. And uh, yeah, I honestly had fun despite all the blood, sweat and tears, and I would definitely miss all the fun times I had with the boys. So a word of advice for anyone who's yet to enlist or anyone who's anxious to start their new journey, um, don't be. You know, it'll be way more enjoyable than you think. Be open to meeting new people, help one another, and just enjoy the journey together. That's what I feel is the most important thing. Um, two years will definitely fly by in a flash. And you may get to experience things that you never get to experience before. So just keep an open mind about everything. And um, I just want to take this opportunity to thank you, the audience, as well as my friends and family for your support. The entire one year and 10 months of my NS journey. Like I always say, I never thought that I would make so many videos about my NS journey, but it seems that some, uh, some of you guys do enjoy this series and it's been a pleasure making this video for you guys. And it, it's really bittersweet to end um, this journey, but I'm going to be starting a new one in a few months, like I said, the university journey. So I'm looking forward to that. So that's all for this video. Um, that is all for the finale of my NS journey. Thank you guys so much for watching. Drop a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. We are still trying to hit the magic 1000, hopefully by the end of this year. And uh, I guess, Third Sergeant Andrew signing out. Wadilo!